Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Need for Speed to see how accurate all the engineering scenes in the movie really are. So when you watch this, you can actually see that the car he's currently driving doesn't have rear view mirrors <laughs> and they are instead displayed like on the windshield of the car itself and this is not in production yet but there are like, if you get like a brand new Camaro for example, there's a way that you can actually have this installed within the car. You will still have your rear view mirrors but the whole purpose of putting this information on the uh, windshield is because you don't want the driver to have to like turn his or her head to actually like to see what's behind him and how to maneuver going forward. It's kind of the same logic of like why they put in those rear view cameras on cars, which are now they're requirements for any car you buy. It's basically like you don't want to have the driver like physically turn their body to see like what's around them for any obstructions or things like that. You want it to make it the easiest experience possible. What the hell are you doing? You don't own this car. You don't get to joyride it. Top speed just over 230. 234. According to this. Hey. Now, I I can tell you just right off the bat that Bugatti makes the fastest cars in the world in terms of the top speed for stock value. And Bugatti is Chiron. Yeah, I think the Bugatti Chiron is the fastest car in the world right now. And then the Veyron is like still top five. But those cars can get over 300 miles an hour. I don't know if at the time, 234 miles an hour was like a big deal, but yeah, now you can buy stock cars that go over 300 miles per hour. It's ridiculous. And they also have over a thousand horsepower. Like they said that in this movie, this current car can go top speeds of 234 miles per hour and it has 900 horsepower, which is still a ridiculous amount. But if you have 900 horsepower, I mean, it gets a slightly I mean I don't know what kind of torque this car has but 900 horsepower will get you far faster than 234 miles an hour but why is it so fast it's 900 horsepower baby is that a lot and also while I'm discussing this most people they don't actually know what horsepower is like you probably have heard the term before like just like here and there it's like a higher horsepower means like there's like more power out of the engine and that that is true but it like the the actual number of like like this like it's 760 horsepower right the 760 really doesn't mean anything like horsepower is just the ratio right like it's like scoville units for like peppers it's like are you gonna take a pepper and measure it to be like yeah this is one million scoville units like no one really cares what Scoville units are. It's just a ratio to say like, yeah, the higher this number, the hotter the pepper is. Same thing with horsepower. The higher the horsepower, the more um, power your, your engine can output. This guy named James Watt, which if you've heard that last name before, because Watt is a unit of power, and one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. How this guy came up with his magical unit was he wanted to find a way to measure the power output of a horse versus the power output of a steam engine. And this is way back like 1700s, like 1800s when science really wasn't widespread as it is now. Like pretty much no one knew anything, okay? So if you were a like credible scientist, you could get away with a lot and he named everything after himself. What he literally did was he took a random horse from a random farm and he pretty much hooked it up to a pulley system. He was like, okay, let's see how long it takes this horse to like carry this like certain amount of weight in one full circle. That was it. But there was nothing like precision about this. So like this guy, he he didn't like have a hundred horses and he measured like the relative power output of he no no no. Literally he was like, hey, give me that like brownish whitish horse over there so I can hook it up to this pulley system and we're gonna like test this guy to see how he goes. I mean, that horse could have been tired or old or like had a limp like there's there's like no sort of scientific method that this guy applied for these experiments and till today 
Like whenever someone compares like, oh, this car is 760 horsepower. It's like you're literally comparing the power output of that engine or motor or turbine to like that one brownish white horse that James Watt hooked up to a bunch of rope many years ago. I hope nobody ever does that because that's extremely dangerous and I want to preface this explanation by saying I do not recommend anyone do this if you end up fueling your car while like the like engine is moving in this case it's not gonna blow up like that's a pretty common myth but like if you're at the gas station and you leave your car running as you fuel it with gas it's not a good idea but nothing bad's really gonna happen I mean the chances of that are pretty low because it's not like your gas tank is connected to like the um, like fuel ignition directly right because if it was then every time you start the car it would blow up like your gas is act it has a whole like slew of places it has to travel before it can actually like burn and then for combustion to occur like it it's not like it's so close to the point where it just blows up instantly that, that that's a myth one of the dangers here also is that you don't want sparks to be just flying everywhere, especially at a gas station because like the, the fumes can catch on fire. Now, even if you just have like a separate container and you want to fill that with gas, it has to be on the ground. And the reason for that is so that you could avoid a static buildup. You really don't want that around flammable objects. I guess like another danger is like if you just like leave that gas like pump actually inside your car and you just drive off with it so the hose like tears off of the actual like gas station port. I mean that would, you gotta pay for that which would suck but in terms of like your car blowing up it, it's, it's, it won't. That's not gonna happen. Are you crazy? Wait, 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 whoa, whoa! Yeah, I don't know why that car flipped in the air. Like, that doesn't make any... Like, if you rewatch that collision actually happen, this car just goes head-on into a rock. Like, I don't... There, there, there's no way that this thing would actually, like, flip vertically in the air like that. It would just crash and, like, stay where it is. And there's a few instances in this movie where, like, this director loves to flip cars. But just, like, rewatch this exact instance, right? There's nothing that would actually cause this car to flip in the way that it does. Like, if anything, it might, like, go to the side slightly, but in a head-on collision like this, the car wouldn't flip. Like, there's nothing that would make that happen. Now, I I've made it a little bit of a policy to, like, stop commenting, in my opinion, how accurate the movie was, and I'll just let you as the viewer decide based off my analysis how accurate you thought it was. But I, I would need to say, like, in the case of this movie, the most accurate part of it was when you could pump gas into your car while it's moving and the car doesn't explode. I mean, it's a horribly dangerous idea and I don't recommend anyone ever do it. The, all the car flips and the, the, the speeds they talked about and the horsepower they were discussing, they were off. I mean, I, I wish they had like consultants on this movie to tell them like, hey guys, you're really wrong about this, but <laughs> it's pretty cool to watch because you do get to see like a Ford Mustang just destroy every other car in the world. And it's like a fun like car movie for like gearheads, but in terms of scientific accuracy, I think Fast and Furious is actually more accurate than this one is. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if there's any other movie or TV show you want me to watch, just throw it in the comments and I'll get to it when I have the time. Thanks again. Stay fresh and stay golden.